Hello, we are coming into spring, which means we've been wearing our sweaters all winter long and maybe they're looking a little bit threadbare. Maybe they've got some pilling to them. Maybe they've caught a snag. Heaven forbid you've discovered one of your sweaters has a hole or two. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to deal with small snags holes and even how to gently shave off pilling on your favorite sweaters. This is great to do in the spring because you've already been wearing the sweaters, you've noticed the holes, you've been able to mark them because, hey, you just lifted up your arm and there was this hole underneath your armpit and you can put a safety pin there and you can fix it before you put it away because when fall comes around and you're gonna wanna wear these sweaters again, there's nothing worse than just pulling it out and boom, there's this thing that's bothering you and it's unfixed. So here in the spring, great time. You finally got some sunshine to really see what you're doing. We're gonna fix up our sweaters here at the end of winter, beginning of spring, so that they'll all be ready. Now this doesn't stop moths. I don't know if this is a moth hole or if it just got caught on something. I suspect moths because this was a, a sweater that I actually got pre-holy with moths. You can see where I have some moth shaving and I've already repaired it before. So that was probably just a smaller hole that's slowly spread out that I didn't catch the first time through. So if you get your sweaters secondhand or you've got some vintage things or maybe you did get an infestation of moths, which can happen to anybody after you've done the cedar, the lavender, whether you do you know, chemical mothballs or natural mint oil, however you've gotten rid of your moths, you've done the putting the sweater into a freezer bag, freezing it, thawing it, and freezing it again to kill any eggs that might be on it. After you've done that whole process, then you can work on patching the holes. And you really have to decide how much work you're willing to put into it. This is a lovely soft sweater. I absolutely love the two-ply cashmere in it. It is my cozy go-to, but it had a ton of little tiny moth holes when I got it secondhand. So you just have to decide, is this sweater worth it? or not. If you've got a synthetic sweater that was cheaply made and it's just coming apart all over the place, maybe you let that one go. But if you've got some nice quality fiber, it is absolutely worth saving those sweaters. And that's what we're going to do. Let's talk about the tools that we're going to use. We're going to use a very fine crochet hook and a round tipped large eye sewing needle. Now, this is different from a usual sewing needle. This one, if I were to press it against my fingertip, I would actually end up puncturing my skin because it is very sharp. We don't wanna cut or pierce the threads. We need a round tip or ball tip needle so that it pushes the threads apart and goes in between them instead of slicing them or puncturing them. So that's why we go with a ball tip sewing needle. And I like the large eye when we're working with yarn because it's just easier. When we do the mending of the hole, we're going to actually just use standard thread. This actually is a silk thread because I happen to have it in the gray that matches my sweater. But if you have to use cotton, that's just fine. If you're using polyester, that can also work. But try to go a slight shade darker than the sweater that you're working with. This one's kind of shiny, but it actually is slightly darker than the sweaters that I'm working with because then it hides in the shadow. If you're really good at this, you can mend any kind of fluffy sweater with any color. In fact, I think when I first mended this, all I had on hand was white. And you can see here on the inside of the sweater, there's just a couple little white threads that are still peeking through. I really should have waited until I had gray, but the black just showed up too much, so I did it in white. So if you're very good, you can make invisible mends with a different color than your sweater, but I highly recommend get one that's slightly darker than what you're working with. So when it comes to crochet hooks, we're going to go to the very far end. I've had a couple of videos that used the N and the Q hooks. I've got a few projects that use these middle ones, but we're going to get down into sometimes these are considered lace crochet hooks, and I don't know if I can quite zoom in close enough for you to see. I don't think that's gonna focus. Anyway, there's a tiny little hook at the end of this. 
Remember with crochet hooks, at least here in the United States, A is small and the further down the alphabet you get, the larger it gets. So the Q hook is the largest hook that I have. But then once you hit A, it then goes into numbers. This one has the number 12 on it, but it's very similar to a bunch of these others that have all kinds of, this is an 11, there's another 12, do these even? It's hard to figure out standardization because I think the 12 that I chose is slightly smaller than the 12 that's here. So we're going to talk a little bit about crochet hook standardization. I've mentioned in a previous video that um, everybody and their grandmother did crochet. It was a good repair technique. It was good garment making technique. And people used to make their own crochet hooks. This crochet hook is either bone or ivory. I suspect it's bone because of these striations. Uh, and it doesn't really match up with anything in the alphabet. It's not standardized. But this is how crochet hooks used to be made out of wood or bone, very rarely metal because metal would be difficult to forge. So in ancient times, wood would be you know, smoothed down with sand or clay wet to you know, rub up and down, and then it would have a notch cut into it. This one being made out of, looks like lathe turned, maybe, maybe this is all hand carved. Actually, there's enough wobbles in it. I don't think this was lathe. I think this was straight up scrimshaw carving of a sliver of bone that had been polished, and then they, you know, made it into a crochet hook. So it's a lovely piece. It showed up in a grab bag from a thrift store, and I'm guessing whoever donated it and whoever sorted it either A, didn't know what it was, B, didn't notice what it was, or C, didn't care what it was, because this is, again, either ivory or bone and a very neat antique uh, crochet hook. I don't actually use this for crochet. I just like having it because I think it's cool. So. We've got our large eye needle. We've got our small hook crochet hook. Now, I like using the metal ones. Some people love having these plastic ones around. I really only use these for crafts. Even when I'm trying to get the tails of some of my work to uh, you know, be worked back in, I always use a metal uh, ball tip needle for that. It just feels better to me. But if you're all about the plastic, I just find that pushing these through a finely knit sweater is very difficult. That's why I go with the metal ones instead. So these are our tools. Put the rest of this away and we will get started with our project. So the first repair that I'm doing is gonna be dealing with snags. Now snags, you're lucky. It hasn't actually cut the thread. And the temptation to do is, is just snip it off here. But what that does is it leaves a hole. And then as the sweater stretches, as you pull it over your body, as you're moving around, that hole expands and expands and expands. And then you're going to have to do mending. We're gonna get to that later. But if you've caught it when it's just a snag, even if it's a pretty bad snag, you can still do something with it. I have two on this sweater. And of course you only notice it when it's on your body. So uh, yeah, these were unfortunate, but I caught it and so now I can do something with it. My first tactic is to find that snag wherever it may be and then use my crochet hook. I go in side with my crochet hook and I push it up through as close to that thread as possible. I hook the snag, it's just a little loop of thread, and I pull it through to the back side. Now if I've got a tiny, tiny little snag, yeah, that's invisible now. I'm gonna do it to the really big one. I'm gonna go to the base of the snag, I'm gonna grab the snag loop, I'm gonna pull it all the way in. So now you can't see it from the outside. So okay, yay, fixed, right? Not yet. We now need to turn this inside out. Because now we've got the snag hanging out on the inside and this can still catch on things. So we now need to work it in to the back side. Now 
I could use a crochet hook and just from front side, back side, and just work it all the way in. But at this point, I'm gonna switch to the sewing needle. Now with this really long snag, and you can see it's it's pretty, pretty serious snag. So I'm going to use that large eye. You pinch it and then push it through and you thread your needle with the snag. Now this has like two parts, so I need to get both parts in there. I'm very close to my camera right now, so I'm sure the volume on this recording is going to be crazy. So I'm going to kind of whisper into my camera delicately. Now I'm going to just pick a couple threads to work this in with. And I'm not really going in a straight line because I don't want it to be an obvious pattern. I want it to be slightly irregular so that it won't be too noticeable from the other side. Okay, I've worked it that way. Now I'm gonna work it back the other way. Sometimes when I'm doing this, I will actually push the needle through first and then thread it. Just one thread here. Okay. So now the eye is close to where those tails are. And I grab it. Now I've seen some life hack videos where the person will then hit this with some clear nail polish. I find that that would leave a hard little spot. There are liquid stitch things that are specifically made for fabrics, but I would rather just keep working the tail all the way through in various directions along the sweater until I no longer have a tail at all. Just give it a couple little stretches because this is gonna stretch over your head and you don't want it so tight that that snaps, but okay. You know what? At this point, I think that one's done. I've only got this one other, and it is a tail so small, it might be very difficult for me to use this needle. So this might be an opportunity to, for me to go back to my hook and carefully pick this one through. So yeah, I don't like using adhesives or like clear nail polish. Nail polish actually will yellow over time. So if you've got a sweater that you know is vintage already and you intend to keep it for years and maybe even pass it on to family members or something like that, uh, don't, don't use adhesives, just go with what you've got. And that's how you solve a snag problem. Turn it back right side out so you can see the beauty of an unsnagged sweater. There we go. And now, unless you knew where to look, I don't even know where the smaller one was, unless you know where to look, you can't tell that this sweater ever had a snag. Okay, um, when it comes to pills, there are special sweater shavers out there uh, and I have used them. In fact, I have one hiding out somewhere. But if you can't find those, just go to the area with the worst pills. This sometimes happens to me on leggings. It'll happen you know, in the thigh area where my legs rub together on this sweater. It's just really happened right here because I used to have a lanyard with a badge on it. And where that buckle hit on the lanyard, I got these pills. So I'm just gonna take a disposable razor and I'm lightly brushing. You don't want to cut the sweater. We're just lightly brushing in one direction and the other. And by the time I've gone in one direction 
and the other sometimes four. Now, most of those pills are cut off, but I don't want to do that too much because I can literally shave off the front of my sweater if I'm not careful. So I've just lightly brushed it. I've got a couple pills left. One direction, two direction, ha, done. Didn't have to do any more. So just go until the pill is gone. Don't overwork it because again, you've got a razor blade and fabric. Razor blades cut, fabric is cuttable. So that's how you deal with small amounts of, uh, of fuzz. If you've got a ton of pilling, consider the you know sweater shaver or see if your local cleaners does uh, sweater depilling. And then it's up to a professional to handle it. But if you've just got a little spot on your own, something like a disposable razor or buying one of those sweater savers uh, can do that. All right, now we're on to repairing actual holes. This sweater, uh, I have two holes in it, one on the shoulder and one in the back under the arm. How did I get one in the back under the arm? I have no idea. How did this one end up on the shoulder? Well, this one on the shoulder is close to some moth holes that I repaired earlier. So I think I just missed a small hole and then over time that small hole has expanded. So how do you discover holes? A, you're wearing it and you find it and you go, ah, I gotta remember to put a safety pin on it when I get home. Otherwise, I turn it inside out and then I look inside the dark hole. And when I see something that looks like a bright, shiny star of light showing. Oh, there it is. It's so hard to show on camera because the camera wants to light adjust for the dark tunnel. But trust me, in the dark tunnel that is this sweater, when I see that hole in the shoulder, it shows up as a bright star. Same thing with the one under the arm on the other side. I'm just looking into the dark tunnel and I see, ah, a bright star right there. That's where my hole is. So look into the dark tunnel, find the light, pin it, and then we can fix it. Okay, so first hole, I'm gonna do the arm one. I'm gonna put my off hand on the inside, whether you're right-handed or left-handed. The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna be doing a bit of stitching around the edge and I'm actually gonna just do kind of a donut and then I'm gonna draw it together. So I'm gonna make a little stitch and instead of a hard knot with tails, I just kind of draw it close and then go back in the same spot. And then because the silk thread is very slippery, I'm just going to tie the knot right here in this spot. Get the loop close, then I go back through the loop and tighten it down. There we go. So now my knot is directly onto the fabric instead of tying a knot. Because remember, these knits, they're so loose, if you just tied a knot in your thread, it would just pull straight through. So you actually have to tie it to the sweater. Now we're just going to pick the highest threads because we're working on the inside of the sweater. That means we're actually picking what are technically the lowest threads in the pattern on the other side. So when these get drawn up, we're just making what was already a lower spot in the pattern slightly lower. We just go around the outside of the hole. We're not crossing the hole. We're not doing darning on this one. I'll show darning in another. Darn you. I will show you darning in a different video. And you can already see I'm drawing this hole together by going around. So I've gone around it once and I draw it tight. I'm gonna go around past my knot. Now that I'm past my knot, I've got the full circumference of that hole held down. Now I'm gonna go across. Go all the way across. I'm gonna kinda do a star pattern. 
So I'm not going straight across. I'm going at a slight angle. Five pointed star, six pointed star doesn't really matter to me. We just want to get all points. If you end up doing more of a triangle because just the way things are, that's okay. All right, that's enough of the star for me. So now I'm going to do that same sort of knot. I'm going to go around once. I'm going to go around a second time. Catching the sweater. And then I'm going to loop through my own thread and that's going to tie things off. And then I'm going to snip this with as little tail as I can. But on the correct side of the sweater, this is a sleeve, so it takes a little bit. On the correct side of the sweater, this hole is now invisible. Let's see if I can find it. There's the safety pin. Ta-da, the hole is basically invisible. If I take out the safety pin, you cannot. Okay, take two on repairing holes because I punched my camera and I have no idea when I did that and if it messed up everything. So, finding a hole, but see that bright spot right there? That is a hole. Put my finger on it, put a safety pin next to it, and then when I get to my repairs, I can immediately find it. A stitch around the outside, we're gonna draw it together. Instead of tying a knot in the thread, which would just end up pulling through no matter what we tried. What I do is I pull it till it's very close. I wanna have my, my tails very similar in length. And then I stitch around the exact same spot again. I don't quite cinch it down yet. And then one more time. And now I go through those two loops and I pull it. And now my thread is tied directly to my sweater. I'm gonna pick parts of the sweater that are sticking out the most around the hole, but as close to the hole as I can without picking one of the broken threads because I don't want to pull the hole larger. So I'm just a little bit on the outside of the hole. There we go. So I'm almost at the end and you see, I just cinch it down and that hole shrinks. I love using natural fibers on natural fibers. So this is silk thread on a cashmere sweater, but if you don't have silk thread, this is actually vintage silk thread. If you don't happen to have silk thread, that's okay. You can use cotton or polyester. Really all that mostly matters is that your color match to your sweater. Slightly darker than your sweater is best. Okay, I cinch it in. Now that hole is mostly disappeared, but I just want to make it a slightly more secure. So I'm going to do a star stitch, tighten that down. And now I'm going to do the same thing to end it. I'm going to do one stitch. Keep it a little loose, two stitches. Keep it a little loose. And then back through both sets of stitches and cinch down. Now I can snip that pretty close. And now once that safety pin is out, and I turn this right side out again. Da -da 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 -da. This is where I punch my camera usually and make it look at everything in the room as it falls. Okay, now that hole is gone. Ugh, but I've got massive pilling. Now sometimes pilling, like this is 
feeling that I can just grab. It ended up, I don't know, getting some of my head hair on there. But sometimes pills you can just pick off with your finger. And if you can pick them off with your finger, that's safer than shaving with a blade. So if you can do that, great. Again, it's where friction happens. So it makes sense that underneath my arms, where my arms are sliding back and forth, that's where the pills happened on this sweater. But because it's cashmere and it's so fluffy, it has all this extra fuzz. I don't really want to shave off all this fuzz. So it's easier if I just pick off the big nasty pills. You want to do that again before you put it away in storage. So when it comes to fall, everything is lovely and beautiful, unless you got an infestation of moths. If you find out you've got moths, first thing you do is you take your wool items and you put them each into a gallon to two gallon bag. Put it inside, Ziploc it shut, stick it in your freezer. Let it freeze. I would say a couple days in the freezer is fine. Pull it out for one day. That tricks all the little moths to saying, oh, winter is over. Let us like, you know, enjoy life. And so like open up the bag a little bit, let it warm up, let it totally de-thaw because there was no liquid in it. It should de-thaw pretty quickly. And then zip it back up, put it back in the freezer and freeze those little guys. And then all the larvae, which are the ones that actually eat this, the adults don't eat it, it's the larvae that get you. Then the larvae that have just hatched because they thought winter was over will be dead. Um, my timing might be off on that, so double check. It might be like a week in the freezer, a week out of the freezer, and a week back in the freezer. So just check the timing. Depending on your area, you might have different species of moths. I haven't really had much of a problem with moths. Uh, other ways that you can deal with moths is cedar shavings, uh, lavender, lavender oil. I've heard that mint oil also works. And you can always go for mothballs. I don't like the smell of them. I prefer the smell of you know, cedar and lavender, but if you really are having a bad infestation, go with the mothballs and then remember, you have to take your clothes out and air them, hopefully like actually in sunshine so that you can get that chemical smell out of your clothes. So, how to repair holes, how to take care of pills, and how to take care of snags, all of that in this video. Here I am leaning close to the camera, whispering sweetly into my camera's microphone. This could be one of those AMSR videos. And you just pick the thread. 